How's it going? My name is Nathan Duck. Here on the internet, I go by Ducky3D, and today we're gonna to be making a really cool animation. If you haven't heard of me, if you don't know what I do, I make Blender tutorials on YouTube uh, mostly focused on motion graphics. It's something that I love to do, and today we're gonna to make a really cool motion graphics animation using Geometry Notes. So I'm gonna go ahead and let you guys know all about that. This one may look simple on the surface, but what we're doing is creating a really customizable and really unique grid within Geometry Notes. So this one's gonna be really, really fun. And a lot of what you're seeing here is very applicable for a lot of different processes, which is really my favorite way to teach. I'm not just teaching you how to make this particular animation. I'm teaching you how to make a system, a process that's really going to show how to apply this to a lot of other different cool ideas. And also all the objects you're seeing are completely swappable with any object you want. So with all that, let's get into it. All right. So this is the official project file for this animation. And there's a little bit of stuff going on. So let me point it out so we kind of know what we're in for. So what we're seeing here, you're seeing these kind of grids right over here that kind of fade into the distance, that grid. So we're going to be making that. And you'll notice all these cubes here. And um, they're at different random sizes, but they're at a bit of a standard grid. If we can start at frame one, this is kind of what we're working with. So if I remove these two planes, this is essentially the bulk of the tutorial is figuring how to make this procedurally. It's completely procedural here in geometry nodes. So let's go ahead and open up a blank document here. I'm working in Blender 3.5.1. Um, I believe this works in even older versions, not too old. If you have geometry nodes, you'll be good. So what we're going to do is hit Shift A and we're going to put in a plane just like this. And we're technically not going to use this plane. Now that we have this, we're going to go up here to the geometry nodes workspace. I'm going to hover over here and delete that because we're not going to need that window. It's just taking up much needed space. All right, so now that we're here, I'm gonna go ahead and click new, and then it's gonna bring up a group input, group output. If you've never worked with geometry nodes, don't worry. I'm gonna essentially hold your hand through this, so it's gonna be all good. I'm gonna go ahead and delete the input, which is this. Anything that starts without geometry nodes that you put a geometry nodes tree on is the input, but we don't need the input. This guy's just a placeholder so we can put something in it. So I'm gonna just delete the input, make sure we just click on that, and then we're gonna go ahead and get a grid. And you might say, well, looks exactly like the input. Well, it's much different because now it's completely non-destructive and we can change the size and at any point do that. You can't get that with just hitting shift A and importing a plane. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click and drag right here and click five, and that's going to scale it by five. And then here on the vertices, I'm going to click and drag and do 20. So that is going to be the setup for us. Then I'm going to hit R, X, 90 and that's going to rotate him where he needs to be all right so now what i'm going to do is i'm going to show you the baseline of kind of the construction of what this tree is going to be this node tree so i'm going to type in separate geometry node so hit shift a search sep separate geometry throw out there and switch it over to face this guy with this input right here that we have yet to plug something into will show us how to delete faces and it's going to be completely non-destructive so what we're going to do is we're going to get a random value node, shift a search or a and D random value. And I'm going to go to Boolean, which will just give us a nice slider and a seed value. And that's going to be awesome. Let's go plug that into the selection. And now it's going to delete since we specified here, it's going to start deleting faces. And you can also animate that you can keyframe this in and out, which is really cool. So what I'm going to do is just bring it over here and let's play with this inverted. So let's get what's called a join geometry, but let me show you what the inverted is first. So inverted is literally the inverted of the selection. Well, now we have all the other things. We plug it back. That's all the other things. So I'm gonna get a join geometry, plug that there, and I'm gonna plug it here. So now we can join them back together, but now we have them separated, which is very powerful. So we can get in a subdivide mesh. So shift a search subdivide and plop it there. And now you have this separation of grid and you can play with it with the, with the random value, which is where our grid is going to come from, which is very cool. So now we have the kind of grid that's ready to have our objects placed on it. So let's go ahead and bring this guy up to kind of make a new workspace. And we're going to get a 
instance on points node, I-N-S-T, instance on points, plug that there. And let me go ahead and actually hit control Z, show you all the points. If you're unfamiliar with that term, that's these guys right here, the points from things cross section. You have your faces, your points, and then your, I'm going to call them lines. That's not the proper word. So we're going to instance an object on each one of these cross sections here. So let's go at instance on points. Do that. And then we're going to go ahead and get shifting, get a CBE, a cube, and plug that into instance. And now it's going absolutely crazy. So what I'm going to do is just click and drag on size here. Click and drag, hold down shift so it's a little bit more of a smooth motion. Uh, but you can just copy my value, which is going to be 0 0.02. So now let's go ahead and add some more variation to these objects. I'm going to go back here to the flat view so we can kind of see this better. And let's add some, some randomness. So I'm going to highlight these guys and then hit G. And I'm going to move him over so we can create some space. So highlight, hit G, moves uh, nodes in batches. What we're going to do is we're going to get a color ramp. Then I'm just going to go ahead and move these guys farther. And then we need to get in a uh, brick texture. And actually, even a checker texture might be better, but didn't really R&D that. It literally just came to mind. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring my mortar size and my mortar smoothness down to zero. I'm going to bring my row height to 0.5 so it matches the row width and bring your offset to zero. Currently in geometry nodes, you can't visualize textures. So what I can do is show you what's happening. So I'm going to make this guy over here and we're going to go to the shading tab. So don't follow along here. I'm just kind of helping you understand this in case uh, you're like me and you're dyslexic and you can't see things in your head. Um, what I'm going to do is get a color ramp like that there and get a brick texture. Plug that here. So here's what's going on. What we did was we brought the mortar size to zero. So that's what this guy is. And then I brought my mortar smoothness, which really won't see a difference now that the mortar size is down. And then notice how they're kind of elongated, they're rectangles. What I'm going to do is 0.5. Now they're squares and then bring your offsets. So now that they do this, and then I'm going to take my color ramp and do this number. These black and white values will dictate how small and large our objects are going to be. So the pure black objects are going to disappear. So let me show you that in real time. So let's go back to geometry nodes and visualize this. So now we have everything that I just showed you. We basically have a brick or, or like a checkerboard now on here that we can plug into the scale. Now this instance is controlling all of these little cubes. So we can actually play with their scale like that. But in, in this case, what I'm gonna do is unplug the color here and the color into scale. And you can now see it starting to, to manipulate them in different places. And you can actually play with the scale of your brick texture if you want, but I'm going to bring this, this in and this in like this, and then pure black makes them disappear. Like I mentioned. So just bring it up to something like this. And now we have randomness in our grid, which is really awesome. And then you can, you know, totally just randomize everything with your offset, with your scale, you can actually actively see the cubes moving so you can have a lot of fun there and then say bring this probability higher now you can literally see that texture affecting the scale of things bring that probability back cool all right now we have played with this side of the separate geometry selection now then that's all of these little pieces what we're going to do now is play with now these solid pieces so here's the problem. I could go ahead, don't follow along here. I'm going to go ahead and instance on points to this guy and then, you know, do the thing, get a cube, plug it into the instance, and then bring down my scale. So now you see that, but here's the problem. I don't like that it's literally on top of my other points. It's intermingling. I want it to be in the center because if I just go ahead and bring it back to where it used to be, see that? I want the instances to be here, not on, you know, the points, it's instance on points. I want the point to be in the middle of the face and that's not as simple as many might like it to be, but it's still simple enough to fix. Here's what we'll do. 
So what we're going to do is get a, we're going to cover over here, shift eight, get a mesh to points, plug that there, and then see how it's still the same thing. It's going on the vertices. We're going to go on faces. And now it's applying it to the middle, which is exactly what I want. Now it's created points. These little weird shade smooth things are literally are, are, are uh, not going to be visible in the render. All right. So we have those points. Now we can do a instance on points. So let's do that. Shift A, I N S T instance on points and just go ahead and get another cube. Plug that there. And then we'll do click and drag 0 0.05. Honestly, 0 0.03. And now we've created our grid. And here's what's really cool about this. See the random value that's really deriving everything here? It's got a random C. So you can randomize this grid to your heart's desire. Um, and I am actually going to go ahead and bring down the scale of the these guys with the white color. Cool. That's looking like it might be much better. Last thing we need to do is apply a material to this. So I'm going to go here to the, this camera icon, go from Cycles to Eevee, because we're not going to be using Cycles. Eevee is just a much better engine for motion graphics like this. We're going to hit Shift and get a set material node. Way over here, we're going to click on the material. Click a new material. I'm going to call it light. You could even call it white. Honestly, call it whatever you want. Go from principled to emission. That's going to create an emission uh, material. Give it a strength of 10. And over here, select that. So now if I go to the render view, that has now applied to this grid and is now emissive and glowing in a sense. Now that we have created the modeling and procedural portion of this tutorial, now we'll get into making it a perfect looping animation. So let's go ahead and get it plain. I'm gonna hit S5. And if you've never watched my tutorials before, you've never seen sort of my method for looping stuff, I call this the box method. The box method method means it, it, it allows you to ensure everything's going to loop when you're throwing objects in the scene. So anything within this the, the circumference of this, I'm calling it a cube or a box, you can instance down the line, you can know that they're all in line together in their mathematical places. It's not random. So I'm going to take this guy, I'm going to click on this little move icon, I'm going to hold down control so it snaps. I'm going to go to the very edge, and then I'm going to hit shift D, and then hold down control and snap this one back to its original spot. And then for this guy, let's go back to geometry nodes really quick. See this little number two? That means this entire node tree is on two separate objects. I'm going to click that. So now we have a new node tree. And then let's go and click on the seed. Give a little bit of a random seed. Now we have a new object. Let's go back to layout. I'm going to go ahead and highlight. We're going to hit M, new collection. I'm going to call it loop. You call it whatever you want. And then now we can go ahead and hit shift A, collection instance, loop, hold down control, and instance this. Go ahead and use Alt D to make an instance of the instance. Hold down Control, of course, to snap it to grid. And that's what I'm talking about with the box method. They're snapping to grid so we know everything is exactly where it needs to be. And that's going to ensure this to actually work properly for us. I can feel my computer start to lag. So I guess we'll just leave it because it's going to get relatively heavy on our computer relatively quick. So what I'm going to do now is hit the tilde key. And it's right above the tab key for me. I'm going to click front. So that's going to orient us properly. Uh, the reason I'm doing that is whenever we import a camera, wherever you're facing the viewport, that's where the camera's going to face. So this prevents us from having to go and reposition the camera. So I'm going to hit uh, shift A camera. I'm going to go ahead and hold down control and bring him to the very edge of this cube. And if we want to double check, Y negative five. Could be on the positive five for you, but it needs to be on a five, positive or negative. So now we have this. Now we can hit zero to go to the camera view. We can see, all right, this is looking really good. We don't need this guide anymore. Actually, we do. We do. Just one more time. Right down here, let's go ahead and do 300, 300 frames. And to make sure that this will be a seamlessly looping animation, we're going to go here to our edit and our preferences. In the animation tab, make sure your default interpolation is linear. 
All right, so let's click on the camera and then um, right back over here on the negative five, I'm gonna click a keyframe. I'm gonna go to the very end, hold down control, and I'm trying to see how many instances down I wanna go. And uh, I remember 45 being the sweet spot. Cool, 45, click. And then I'm just gonna go ahead and make one more instance, two more instances actually, so that we can't see the end of it whenever we're animating. So now if I press play, it looks like we're at 13 frames a second, so it will be much faster, but don't worry. So now let's go ahead and get this into render view so this actually will look nice because right now it just looks chaotic and bonkers. So let's go here to the EV view. And then I'm going to go here to this world icon, bring my world brightness to black. And then right here on volume, this is what's going to make this look nice. So volume, principled volume. And then the density of the volume, I'm going to go up here and just turn off those gizmos. The, the, less, the more density, the more fades out. So if I just press it like this, and then we press play, we can see now it's going to fade out. We'll fix that in a second. But if we have zero density, we see everything. So the di this volume is making us be able to see far or close, really whatever we want. And then in terms of the camera, I'm going to click on the camera up here in the outliner. And then I'm just going to bring him... Bring him like right here so we're not running into objects. Very nice. And where it looks like we're going to be at, we're looking at about 10 frames a second. It gets kind of laggy. It's going to be a bit faster, but we can kind of see what's going on. One more animation here. So let's go back, hit the back arrow to frame zero again. Right here on the Y axis, we're going to animate the rotation. Go to the very end, type in 360. Keyframe it. So now we have this action going on. It's very cool. And then we have one more thing to model here. So if I go back over here, I'm at the period key to kind of zoom in. This guy, he can go. So we can just go ahead and straight up delete him. We no longer need the guide to make sure it loops perfectly. I'm gonna hit Shift A, get another plane. I'm gonna hit S5. But I'm gonna just kind of bring them up a little bit. I'm gonna hit Tab, right click, subdivide. We're making that grid that's in the that's in the top and the bottom of the original animation. So I think maybe a number of cuts of 10 might be good. So we'll go over here, number of cuts. And then go out of edit mode, go to the modifiers here, add modifier and get a wireframe. Click on boundary. And then I'm gonna hold down shift to make it much more controlled. Just bring this wireframe down to something really small. So 0 0.0007. That, I think that might be small enough. I'm going to go back to camera view. He's definitely way too high up there. So I'm going to bring him down. Go to the render view. Making sure that guy's selected. Go down here to the material and click on the light material. So now that we can see him. And then let's go back to the flat view. See how he's here? I'm going to hit M. That's going to add him to the loop collection. And now he is on all of them. So he, we added him to that whole collection. And then I'm going to take this guy and I'm going to hit Alt D and bring it down. And now if we go to the render view, we have our grids, we have our objects. It's animating nicely. It looks nice. Go ahead and tweak the size of things if you think that might be too big, which it probably is. Have some fun with it. But this, this is how you do it. Let's go ahead and export this guy and call it a day. So click on the little printer icon, select your resolution. I'm at 1920 by 1080. Highly recommend doing a PNG sequence. So go ahead, go to your desktop, and then I'm going to go create a new folder and just call this uh, the tut. And then uh, there we go. Accept. And then keep it at PNG, all that fun stuff. Render, render animation. And when you're done, compile that PNG sequence. It's going to be a seamless loop. It's going to look awesome. It's going to look great. Thank you guys for watching that. I hope you learned some stuff. I know geometry nodes can be kind of daunting and weird if you've never approached it. Kind of node-based modeling can be, you know, hard to wrap your brain around if you've never done it before. But if you are interested in making motion graphics, harness geometry nodes, it's really gonna help you out. I have a ton of videos on my channel for that and more to come. Uh, but with that being said, thank you guys for watching. I hope you learned some stuff and I'll see you in the next tutorial.